I'm Will Dunaway, and I've been teaching a workshop here in the Alabama Hills in Inyo County, and we're looking up at the highest uh, peak in continental U.S., Mount Whitney, and uh, I've got a bunch of people here that were teaching 19th century photography called Wet Plate Collodion. actually half of the lens, it's, it has four elements and you can only use two at one time and as you interchange the other elements, it goes from a whole plate, which is six and a half, eight and a half, and with the exchange it goes to eight by 10, then 11 by 14, and I believe as big as 16, 20, all with one piece of optic. This is the front of it. We had to mount it rear because of the focus depth is shallow. So we mounted it on the inside of the board. Uh, they called Zint Myers by the man that made them in Philadelphia, approximately 1862. And there's only a couple of them known to exist in the world. You, you know, uh, a lot of people ask me all the time, what is wet plate collodion? And uh, it's kind of an odd process that was invented in 1851 by a man named Frederick Scott Archer in England. It sort of replaced the daguerreotype process that was invented in 1839 by Louis Jacques Daguerre. And it kind of swept the world, especially in America. And eventually, uh, after the Civil War was fought, they came to, to out west here and they made glass negatives. And these negatives that were printed and they were taken back east and people began to see absolutely majestic landscapes that were so far different than the war-torn east and consequently, most of our national parks were saved from uh, the men like Carlton Watkins and Edward Mybridge, uh, William Henry Jackson, by making these plates from 20 to 24 inch plates down to five by eight glass negatives, which they sent back east and they made stereo cards. And it was really those stereo cards that sold Americans on, the, on saving places like this. Uh, near Mount Whitney called Alabama. So the process is is really unique in that you have to you have to pour the plate on glass or an iron, and while it's still wet, wet you sensitize it in silver nitrate, about a nine percent solution. As you can see here, it kind of stains your hands when you handle it. So a lot of people call it the black art. But after you uh, sensitize it, you have to very quickly expose it, and then develop it in an iron acid solution, and then. Uh, you, you fix it and dry it and varnish it, but it all has to be done right where you're working. So you have to kind of carry your dark room around. But it's a craft more than it is a science. And that's what we do here. <laughs> 